This video lecture is going to instruct you on how to use the Oxford English Dictionary and what you can find in, and how this can be appropriate uh, or helpful in your analyzation of Shakespeare or really any literary text. First, let's just look at how to find the Oxford English Dictionary. So from the a and website, we're here at the Jernigan Library's homepage on the uh, a and Kingsville website. This is, of course, the Havelina Discovery. This is our um, database, our library catalog. Uh, but what we want to go to to find the Oxford Eng English Dictionary is online resources over here on the right. So we click on that. And that takes us to this Jernigan Library online resources list. Um, this is a very useful site. Whenever you're researching in any of your classes, you can just use this subject guide to help you find the different databases that are appropriate to that discipline. But for our purposes, since we're looking for the Oxford English Dictionary, we can just go through the alphabetical list and right over to O. Clicking on that will take us to all the databases that begin with the letter O. And here we go, Oxford English Dictionary the accepted authority on the English language, unsurpassed guide to the meaning, history, and pronunciation of 600,000 words. So we click on that. If you're off campus, you will need to log in. Uh, otherwise, it'll take you right to the web page. Now, searching the dictionary. Very easy. It just uses a regular old search bar like any other site. Type in the word that you want to ser search, hit go, and it'll take you there. The word I've chosen, because it is very important in Much Ado About Nothing, as well as many other of Shakespeare's plays, is the word honest. So now this takes us. Notice we have two different results for honest. Honest used as an adjective or adverb, and honest used as a verb. And this tells us the relative frequency, right? The word honest comes up more in this uh, entry. This, this entry has sources that date as early as around 1330, whereas this one goes to around 1382. And since we're looking at, in this case, honest as an adjective, uh, this is the one we would select, the first entry. Sometimes, though, you'll see that the same word might be an adjective, a noun, a verb, um, and you might need to look at those different uses. Again, especially depending on if Shakespeare uses it as uh, a noun or a verb or an adjective as he often does, use the same word as multiple parts of speech. So we click on our entry, and it takes us here. I recommend clicking full entry right here under the title. This will give us all the information that the OED has on this word. Just a few things just to overview. If we skim down, we can see that we've got pronunciation, different forms of it, historical forms, how frequent it is in current use, its etymology, that is its origins in other languages, um, and then the various definitions with quotations, historical quotations that show the word being used in that, in that definition, in that, for that meaning. So this gives us all the different definitions of honest. It also has different phrases to make someone honest, to be honest special uses, and so forth. If we scroll back up to the top, gives us all the other phrases that we might link to. Honest John, honest hearted, to be perfectly honest. All these different little uh, uh, sub-entries. And over here, notice that it gives us words that are close to it alphabetically in the dictionary. So right before honest is Honer, which probably is not related, but we have honest as the verb. We also have honestly, honestness, honesty. So these are all words that we might look up because they are related to the adjective of honest. So this can help us to find closely related words or variations on our root word. So let's explore the information that we can get from an OED record. And we'll start by looking at the etymology. Um, the etymology of a word is its origins, its historical origins, the root of the word where it comes from. So we notice that honest, it's a borrowing from French. And the etymology gives us the various basic meanings of its French, of the French roots. So from the Anglo-Norman honest, honest, et cetera, et cetera, it means 
honorable, virtuous, just, frank, commendable, appropriate, etc., etc. Um, of a woman, it means irreproachable in conduct or chaste. Also from the classical Latin, honestus, regarded with honor or respect of high rank, worthy of respect, etc., etc. Now, why is this important? Well, think about the way we use the word honest and what it means. We use it to mean truthful, something that is true, something that is not false. Yet the root meaning and the meaning that would have been much closer to Shakespeare has less to do, at least on its surface, with truthfulness than with honor, with virtuousness, with the appearance of being polite, conforming to polite society, being decent and respectable, etc., etc. So the idea of honesty, then, is initially given to us in Shakespeare, or, or the root of it has roots in this sense of honor, public appearance, respectability. So that tells us a lot about when people in Shakespeare say that they are honest or not honest. Does it have to do just with their ability to tell the truth? Or does it also have to do with their appearance, the way they appear in society as a potentially respectable person? And when we think about honesty as applied then to a woman and a woman's chastity, this honesty means less than, again, her truthfulness than her appearance of being respectable, that she presents herself as a respectable woman. So let's take a look at the definitions now and give you a basic outline of the way the definitions um, are structured here. Uh, there's an outline, a hierarchy, so we have various definitions and sub-definitions. It will give you the explanation of when this definition is current, so this tells you, for example, that honest used as an adjective, we're looking at when honest is said of something or condition or action, it is described as being honest. And these are the various meanings, the various definitions that, uh, that it can hold. So if you're saying that a feast is honest, you mean that it is magnificent, sumptuous, stately, splendid, etc. And so each definition gives us one of these, gives us this definition here. Part two, we get to thinking of a <clears throat> person who is honest, of a person holding a position of honor, distinguished, noble, hence good in esteem, respectable, reputable, etc. As a general epithet of appreciation or praise for a person. So these are all the definitions when you're saying an adjective, uh, using honest as an adjective to describe a person of a person or society, of good moral, etc., etc. So each one of these definitions tells us a different usage, a different context in which the word is used. And note that it'll tell us also, is this obsolete? That's what the OBS means. It's no longer a usage. It's no longer a common usage. Rare, right? Not quite obsolete, but we don't use it that often. Um, it's now somewhat rare, right? So you'll see these descriptions, archaic and rare after early 18th century. So it's rare after the early 18th century, and it also sounds archaic. It sounds a bit old. So this can tell you all the different definitions, and you can see their contexts and how they're used. Another important detail that the OED gives us is the um, quotations. So this tells us when the word is used, and it shows us a specific example of the word being used in that way. So, for example, definition 1b, worthy of honor, honorable, commendable. It gives us these different quotations going back as far as 1340 all the way up to 1771 of quotations of people using the word in that way. So, Alexander Pope in 1716 in his translation of Homer's Iliad says, no, tis not honest in my soul to fear. That is, it's not worthy of honor, it's not commendable for my soul to fear. Not deserving of disgrace or reproach. We have usages from 1340 all the way up to 1997. 1384 to 1566, 1382 to 1995. And notice sometimes we will even get Shakespeare as the attested usage. So when you're saying that a person is honest and you're using that as a general epithet of appreciation or praise for a person, 
as in it's a compliment, they're an honest person, they're an, they're an honorable person. Well, we have a quotation from Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, your name, honest gentleman. So honest there being used as a, as a compliment. So this is very important because it tells us, is this word likely to have had this meaning in Shakespeare's time? So anything that maybe ends before Shakespeare's time is still potentially a, a usage. So even though Shakespeare is not likely to use the word honest to describe a feast, he might. It was a possible meaning, even though it might have been somewhat archaic. This is a possible meaning. Uh, 1B, 1C, these are all current during Shakespeare's time. And we notice that some of them start getting more and more common around Shakespeare's time, right? So the, the usage of honest to describe a person starts to appear a little bit later than the usage of to describe a feast. So this can tell us what's possible. What are the meanings that could have been accessible to Shakespeare and his audience? And we notice a lot of different usages. It could 1A uh, through D, definitions 2, definitions 3, definitions 4, right? All of these could have been current during Shakespeare's time. And notice that the meaning that we use is only one of the meanings of Shakes of honest. To say that it's something is uh, done with truthfulness, fairness, or integrity of character, or to describe someone as honest, that is, they're not disposed to lie, cheat, or steal, these are only some of the meanings in Shakespeare's time. There are much more meanings, and it's much more common to actually use honest to refer to honor or respect. So our meanings, and free from guile or dissimulation, ingenuous, innocent, candid, straightforward, ref generally reflecting a person's character. When we say he's an honest person, this is the meaning that we use. The earliest usage that they have in the OED is from 1634, slightly after, a few years after Shakespeare's death. Now, does this mean that Shakespeare could not have used it in this way? No, it just me might have been early in its usage. So the OED hasn't identified it as being used in this way, but it's still a possible meaning. But once we get to things that don't have meanings until 1743, then this is probably not a meaning that we would want to attribute to Shakespeare because it's just way too late for his career. It's a meaning that emerged centuries after his death. So anything that we can see that is close to his period 1660, 1654, possibly a little pushing it, 1876, defin definitely way too late. So this can tell us, by looking through and looking at these dates, we can see what are the different possible meanings that might have been appropriate in Shakespeare's time. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this lecture is the sample entry that I want you to produce as the first part of your assignment for this week. Um, taking the information from the OED and recording what is essential uh, for the word that you've chosen. So again, assuming you had chosen honest as the word to look up, you'd found honest in, in the play in Much Ado About Nothing, and you decided to look it up on the OED, you'd investigate the definitions, and you start to gather the ones that are going to be most appropriate. So it should look something like this. Honest adjective and adverb, so start with the name, and then I've tried to preserve the different levels. So the general meaning, honest as an adjective, part one of a thing, condition, action, etc. And I've just cut and pasted these entries directly from the OED. Number one, A, B, C, D. Number two, A, B. Number three, A, B. Number four, A, B, C, D. All the different versions, the different meanings that might have been current during Shakespeare's time. And then this last one, since it is not only our most, our most current usage of the word in modern English, but it's the latest one uh, that might have been possibly uh, a meaning accessible to Shakespeare and his audience, I went ahead and marked the date just to say, well, this one is a little bit late. So <clears throat> as you're going through, find the definitions that are most useful, that are most appropriate for Shakespeare for his time period and record them in a document. And then after this, the second part of the assignment will ask you to then use the Shakespeare concordance 
to take these definitions and start seeing how they transform the meaning of the play. And the next lecture, I will talk a little bit about that, review the Shakespeare Concordance again, and using the word honest in these definitions, exploring a little bit in Much Ado the different ways in which honest might be used and how the definitions from the OED can help us to unpack and unfold the deeper meanings within Shakespeare's text.